Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Today's Second Life video is all about the Black Dragon viewer, which is seen by many as the daddy of Second Life viewers in terms of graphics and visual effects for photography. So we're going to do a quick photo shoot and I'm going to walk you through some of the best features in the viewer, including camera control shortcuts, lighting and shadows, the inbuilt poser, and a few photography effects, including depth of field. If you're new to Black Dragon, this video is perfect for you. If you're already a Black Dragon master, you can still sit back and enjoy the fun. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. I love to hear from you, so leave a comment below and let me know what is your favorite thing about Second Life's Black Dragon viewer. It's always better to learn together. So let's get into it. The first thing you'll probably want to do is add shortcuts to all of the menus that you use regularly. Really simple to do that. Right click the toolbar, click toolbar buttons and then just drag and drop the buttons that you need. I'm going to add preferences and the sky editor buttons onto my screen, which we'll be using a bit later in the photo shoot. Now that we've got quick access to our buttons, we're going to modify our key bindings so that it's easier to navigate and move around, especially if you're used to using other Second Life viewers. Again, this is really simple. Open up the preferences menu and click key bindings. We want to swap four of the important key bindings for turning left and right. Firstly, choose the turn right button, click modify, and then enter the key that you want to replace it with. So I'm changing it to the right arrow button and then clicking bind. We're going to do the same for the turn left, click modify, enter the left arrow key. You then just need to replace the keys which already had the left and right arrows assigned. I'm going to replace move left with U and move right with I, since I'll never be using those functions. Everything else can pretty much remain the same depending on what you prefer. Our buttons are all set, so now we can get into the photography settings. I'm going to show you some keyboard shortcuts for maneuvering your camera, which is much more effective than using the interface buttons on the screen. Hold Alt and click your avatar. Then while still holding Alt, you can move your mouse back and forward to zoom in and out. Or hold Alt and use the arrow keys. Alt and Control will rotate the camera up and down and side by side when you move your mouse. And then to create a pan zoomed effect, you can just hold Control and 8 to zoom out, Control and 0 to zoom in, and Control and 9 to reset the camera. And this is really good for making your subject proportion to the background. Shift, Alt and Control all at the same time will allow you to pan directly up, down, left and right. The other really cool camera setting in the Black Dragon viewer is this one where I'm rotating the camera for an angled shot. Just hit Shift and Q to tilt the camera left or Shift and E to tilt it right. So now we're going to play with the sky editor. So click on the sun icon, which we added earlier, and this brings up our fixed environment sky editor. And we're going to scan through some of our presets to find a vibe that works with the photo. I prefer to use my keyboard to scan through these rather than my mouse, and we're looking for something dark and ominous. These ones look pretty cool and provide different effects and mood. It's possible to upload different wind lights, but we're keeping it simple right now and just working with the ones that are already preloaded. To add more of a focus light, I'm going to attach a custom light box, which I created earlier just by using the build menu and creating a simple cube prim then go to the features tab tick light and you can see how it looks when I switch it on and off and you can also adjust the color of the light to anything that you like my light box is alpha out so we can only see it if we highlight transparent objects by clicking Control, alt and t when that's enabled you can see all of these red highlighted objects but when I click it again everything returns to normal and the light box is hidden I can also save this preset to reuse later by hitting the save icon from the drop down menu and then just enter in a name so I can easily access the preset from my inventory later on if I need it. We can see that there's some adjustments that we need to make to the pose and Black Dragon allows you to move and control all of your joints in your avatar. So with this pose the arm is buried in the leg. To fix this we can either just move the arm up or bring the leg down. So here I'm clicking on the pose icon, hit the start posing button and then find the joint that you need. We're going to move the left leg by targeting the left hip and then you can control the axis points. So here we're rotating the X and Y axis to shift the leg around so we've got complete control of the joints, which is super cool. And I can keep adjusting these sliders to get it in the ideal position. And we're also just making some adjustments to the right leg and the right arm, following the same process of adjusting the X, Y and Z axis, targeting the hip for the leg and then the collar, shoulder and elbow joints for the arm. Such an excellent feature and the best thing is if you completely mess it up, which has often happened to me, you can always just restart by hitting the reset button. So since moving my 
leg, we can see that the foot is too far into the ground. So I'm just going to hover my height and move my avatar up a little. All I did was right click my avatar, choose hover height, and then move the slider up or down. And also just making some adjustments to the pelvis to tilt the body in a different direction. Just don't forget to reset your hover height to zero once you're finished with the photo. Otherwise you'll be floating in the air and getting all kinds of judgmental looks from people who probably take themselves way too seriously. Depth of field in the preferences menu is perfect for drawing more attention to the subject and blurring the background. This will need a little experimentation just depending on how far you're zoomed in. But here I've adjusted the field of view and the field number to balance out the blurriness of the background with the sharpness of my avatar. As you become more familiar with the settings, you'll probably prefer to work with the machinima bar and you can access that by hitting F1. Most of these settings are also in the preferences section, but this just gives you quick convenient access. There's a whole bunch of other settings here and we can add more brightness to the shot and work on the lighting and glow iterations and strength. I'm going to add a subtle vignette to darken the edges of the shot. This setting can be a little harsh so just be gentle with the slider to avoid overdoing it. I'm also just blurring the shadows a little so they're not so pixelated. The settings can look a little bit overwhelming at first but just have fun with modifying them. You can hover over the header to get a description of what it does and if you mess up you can always just reset the sliders back to their default from the preferences menu. But once you're ready to take your photo hit the snapshot icon and choose the highest resolution that your computer will take. I usually set mine for 5000 pixels width and then just save it to your computer. So Black Dragon is pretty amazing and allows you to do a lot of the editing inside the viewer if you wish. I prefer to save some of the post editing for Photoshop, which I've just recently started to learn and want to develop my skills in. So as I become more experienced with Second Life Photography, I'll post more longer walkthrough videos showing you my whole process from concept through to editing in Photoshop. But if you want to get involved with the Black Dragon community, there's a Discord group which has been created by the developer. They're very active and engaged and there's lots of helpful people on there who are passionate about Second Life Photography and the viewer. The link will be in the description so check that out. That's all from me today guys. Please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I'll be posting more tutorials in this series alongside my regular videos, vlogs and free gifts. So don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, take care, stay safe and see you soon.